Hi, and welcome to the Expansive Podcast. My name is Eric. And of course, as always, I am joined by my ever elegant co-host, Mr. John Sane, with his new owl. Mr. John Sane, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, thank you. If you are listening to this on podcast, you have no idea what Eric is talking about. Uh, if you're watching <laughs> this on YouTube or on Facebook, I have just ordered myself a white owl that sits on my left shoulder whispering sweet wisdom a, a painting yeah. by the way it, uh, it kind of sounds like a idea. real owl might be sitting on your shoulder oh no 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 it's a, it's a yes yes it's a painting <laughs> um in fact you know eric i watched this great documentary on birds flying over very very sensitive speakers inside the bbc um sort of like hall and they were trying to measure the sound of different birds and their flying and do you know the owl was absolutely silent? What? They picked up nothing and it flew right over the speakers. So owls Jeez, are these very mystical, yeah, incredible, mm. eh? Some very mystical um, creatures. And when I was going through the art world website looking for art for my new place, that when I saw this owl, I was like immediately drawn to the, the energy of it. So mm. yes, I've got the owl. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm very good. All good here in Cape Town. The, the, the city's come alive since the president has given us uh, the ability to go to the beach and <laughs> to uh, live our lives again. So yeah, things are good here. How are you, Eric? How is Joburg going? And how is the year kicked off for you? Yeah, so far so good. Um, been doing a lot of writing, a lot of... Uh, we've just been speaking beforehand. Uh, we always do this. We always schedule the call for like uh, three o'clock and then... And you get to actually record it like four. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were just saying like, you know, trimming the fat. And so like, it's been a, I started this year with a lot of energy, trying to do a lot of things very intentionally so that I can kind of see what can I trim later on and where can I focus my energy and attention. And so I feel like I've kind of hit that point now where I'm just focusing down and focusing down. Uh, so I'm good in that regard. And it's been very overcast here for the past two weeks or so. Um, but before we get into the podcast, I, I wanted just to quickly say that um, I saw your new, I was going to say Speedo, but it's not a Speedo. Um, I, was, <laughs> I still have the, this, the half uh, Speedo kind of caught in my head for some reason, but you have a, a new Pervert. swimming outfit. Pervert. <laughs> yes, it's called a, it's called a, a wetsuit. And uh, I've gotten this wetsuit because tomorrow we swim in the canals. Uh, here in Cape Town and apparently it's really really cold and quite dark um, so I've just started swimming I have Listen, I'm no very idea worried about what's going to happen tomorrow yes I'm yes I might not be back this might be the last podcast <laughs> yeah look I, I, I'm going full tilt I mean this wetsuit was not cheap you have no idea what these wetsuits cost I really mean, I was just like I was gobsmacked but um, necessary <laughs> for the Ironman and necessary for in those waters and yeah, I mean, I made this mistake when buying a bicycle, you know, I thought I'd buy an entry level and then, you know, it'd be okay. And then it wasn't and I had to upgrade and then I lost money on the entry level and then mm. I got midway and I was like, no, no, I actually want to upgrade properly. And then I lost money again on the mid level. And now I've got a really good bicycle and it's like, okay, I should have just done this one. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine you share the same thing when it comes to golf. So, you know, you know, the story, you know, I actually have the opposite problem quite often. And that is that like oh. this mic is a good example. Um, when I said I was going to start podcasting, I'm like, well, I can't just podcast on like a normal mic. I need the yeah. best mic. So I, yeah. I, would go, I go out and buy the most expensive stuff. And then what very often ends up happening is I don't use it anymore. It's like an infatuation for oh, like wow. two weeks. And then I'm uh, like, well, I'm kind of over it now. And then I'm like, oh, shouldn't I spend all that money on this thing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, so but you yes, have all but, these high hopes for yourself, and then, uh, yeah, they don't come into fruition. I think the equipment will make me more successful. That's that's yes. what happens. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, it should do. Well, good to hear that. Uh, I think um, today uh, the topic really is an exciting one for me. I have been building a transformation masterclass for my clients, as it seems to be such a big buzzword uh, in the world today, as everybody's trying to go through some sort of transformation. Last week, we did part one of the transformation process, and we focused on the internal human aspect and the mindset required for transformation. 
Now, the specialist between us in leadership is very much you. You've written multiple books on the process and uh, work with many organizations around this process. And so today's discussion is going to be very much around the leadership role and the organizational structural shifts that need to be looked at and recalibrated when we look at transformation. Mm. So I'm excited to be talking about this topic and excited to learn from you today, Eric. And of course, I'll be adding in my five cents. But uh, yeah, excited to hear what you have to say. And tell us a little bit about this leadership book that you have been writing. And it's taking a hell of a long time, eh, Eric. When's it going to be coming out? <laughs> that was just a jab. Eric been complaining <laughs> offline that uh, he wants to get it out and he's irritated that it's taking so long. So it's just a bit personal <laughs> joke there. But carry on, Eric. <laughs> yeah, listen, so... Uh... I wrote a leadership manual at the beginning of the year, um, ended up being just shy of about 8,000 words. And funny enough, uh, transformation as a concept didn't really feature in it. Um, mm. I think it's it's interesting now, sort of in retrospect, that I didn't really mention it much. But I think there's mm. so many things that people are contending with at the moment, so many things that are like um, battling for our attention or fires that need to be put out that I'm... Um, I even think that transformation for many people is just sort of sitting at the back of their heads. It's not something they, mm. they actively thinking about how to engage with. Um, and maybe those that have sort of come through the fire, they are ready to do it. Uh, but irrespective of why, where you find yourself, I actually think this is a year of transformation. And so has um, last year been. But where I wanted to actually start us off with is there's actually a style of leadership called transformational leadership. So when you look at the sort of academia of, of leadership, there's many different styles and theories about leadership. And one style of leadership is called transformational leadership. Mm. And you'd think that it's a very modern and new thing, but it was mm. actually coined in 1978. So wow, okay. yeah, it's been around for a very, very long time. And, mm. you know, when I read initially, when I read the definition of transformational leadership, I was like, what? Like, so let me quickly read it to you. So transformational leadership is a style which involves working alongside team members in order to identify the need for change, create an inspiring and motivational vision, and to execute necessary steps required for change in tandem with team members. That to me just sounds like sounds leadership. Like, yeah, that sounds like yeah. leadership. What's, <laughs> what, uh, what's so transformational about that? That's, uh, that's, that's about... It, it just sounds like leadership. Um, yeah. But I think to understand it, I need to actually tell you about a different leadership style because, okay. you know, like this sounds like everyone should just naturally be doing this. Like mm. you set the vision for change, you execute it with the people in your team. Mm. But actually, I think there's about 60, 60 or so leadership theories out there. Mm. There's multiple mm. leadership styles. And the one that often gets contrasted with transformational leadership is transactional leadership. So mm. transactional leadership is reward and punishment, right? Like mm. you do this, you get that. Um, at work, it is, um, if you do something good, you get a bonus. If you do something bad, you get a warning. At school, it was, if you uh, do something good, you yeah. get gold stars. If you do something bad, you get detention. Mm. And so transactional leadership is very much about having control, making sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And mm. you have to have oversight. You have to be able to to supervise people to make sure that they are doing the right thing or, the, or, or observe the wrong thing so that you mm. can actually take the appropriate action. So transactional leadership is, a, is a, a style that I think many people sort of naturally have because of the way that we are brought up. And to be honest, like when I, when I voice it like that, you know, it, it might sound like quite a negative leadership style. It might sound like this is the thing that we actually don't want to see in leaders, but it's not really true because Actually, transactional leadership has its place. If I said to you, you know, who, you know, top five transformational leaders in the world, uh, who is that? Or who do you, like, who would you choose as a leader to, um, to demonstrate what transformation le leadership is all about? I'm pretty sure in the top five at some point will feature Steve Jobs, right? Like, I mean, this guy not only transformed Apple, he not only transformed an industry, but he pretty much transformed the world through the products that he released and the, the culture. Wow, was you know? he transactional as well? Actually, he was very transactional. He yeah. was very transactional. And, yeah. and that's kind of the point here is that 
he was this incredible visionary leader, but there were also times when he had to be a very transactional leader. And by mm -hmm. many accounts, you know, he had um, incredible input and sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, control over marketing and over product development. So mm -hmm. when you think of transactional leadership as almost this very tight knit, you know, very focused way of leading, very outcome driven way of leading, you then start seeing that, oh, well, this is just driven on an outcome. It's not really about the change and the transformation that comes with it. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think transactional leadership is a bad leadership style, but I think when we contrast the two, it kind of makes you realize that, oh, there's a transformational leadership isn't just leadership. There's something special that gets added to the mix. And that is that the leader actually puts transformation at the top of the agenda. Okay. Okay. That's great. So where we are today and the leadership that's required today, would you say that it's more necessary to be transformational than transactional in this emotional turmoil of a space? Or do you still think that it's important to have both? I still think it's important to have both because I think when you have a transactional leader, they are perhaps better at executing on the things that the transformational leader um, uh, and we'll, we'll break that down in a bit. But the vision that the transformation leader has for where the organization must go and where people can be supported for in their own transformation, I still think that someone who's slightly more transactional might be better at helping people to execute on that at times. What are your thoughts on okay, that? Okay, so, yeah, so, no, I get that. I think there's operational uh, implementation of strategy. And then there's the overarching strategy. So you're building the transformational uh, strategy, but then you need somebody to actually get down and, and transform the business itself mm. through transactional leadership. Mm. So yeah, that, that makes sense. I like that. Can you explain to me what stops leaders from being transformational? Like why are leaders taking so much strain doing that? Do you mean if they go from, if they are traditionally like a, a transactional leader? Transactional, yeah, yeah. Because in this, in this era, while we're going through this, I think it leans towards more transformational leadership than it does transactional initially. Because when it's so emotional, you want to be holding much more the emotional states of your staff in high regard. Mm. And then come into transactional. I think when there's so much stress at home, you have... You know, you have home life, working from home, uncertainty, all these things coming. And then you come up with more transactional processes. You really aren't doing anybody any favors. People are already highly stressed. And so what's stopping people from making this mix? Is it their own, is it their own panic or like, what is it? Yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head that when we talk about transformational leadership, like if we had to put a tagline to it, it is you have to capture the hearts and the minds of people, you know? And unfortunately we are like, businesses for many for many leaders it's just a very outcome driven process and that's what you get judged on and that's what your bonus depends on and that's what's going to make you feel either like a failure or like a success and so it makes more sense for you to focus on the short term of making sure that things are happening that we are turning a profit that the business is surviving and that transformation which we said previously is this slightly longer process kind of gets pushed back because if it's a longer process with no deadline in sight or I can't see it in in you know my near future I'm not as concerned about it but like whether we turn a profit this month or not whether we are laying off people this month or not like those things I think then take priority so how do leaders move between the two because obviously transactional is incredibly important to respond and recover to where we are but then how do you shift over? Like, what's that process look like? Or do you have any practical tips or tools? Yeah, I do. So actually, when we say that a leader is transformational, like we said, there's um, an incredible focus on transformation at three levels, organization, people, and yourself. And all three of them need to pull through. Like, you can't just focus on one of them. And there was actually a guy called Bernard Bass who uh, kind of broke it down into four key areas that you need to embody and live into if you're going to be a transformational leader so the first one is inspirational motivation 
And what this means is that as the leader, as a transformational leader, you must set a big vision for the future. Something that shows people that we are going from state A to state B. And not only that, on top of that, you need to be able to communicate that, that message, that vision in a way that inspires people, that makes them go, hell yes. And I think we've definitely seen this over the past few months or not even months, years, that people want to get to work and actually do something meaningful. They want to feel like they, there's purpose behind it. And so I feel like, you know, part of inspirational motivation is that your purpose is aligned to what this transformation is going to look like. Right. So that's number one. Number two is idealized influence. What this means is that the leader must embody transformation themselves. You know, so I, I, I think this is where we fall short so often. Um, a leader will say, you know, we have to, we have to become more clear about the boundaries that we have in terms of how we operate in terms of, you know, work and play. And then what do they do? Like the next weekend, they break those boundaries and they start messaging people over the weekend or whatever. Like you're not, you're not really being congruent with the transformation that you are wanting to see. So in that way, like you have to be a role model. Like if you are saying we are moving into this IT space and that should be what you talk about, think about, breathe, like you should embody that for people. Um, and then in, in the same way, then, you know, when you are the role model, people can also aspire to think and act in the same way. Like, I don't think we should underestimate, it's not that the, that the leader is the hero in the story, but I don't think we should underestimate the impact of being a role model in the organization. Yeah, I think that's brilliant because I think a lot of leaders, you know, there's a great saying that says your actions are so loud, I can't hear a word you're saying. Yes. And I think that uh, all of us get caught up in preaching, but then not practicing. And uh, even with our kids, you know, uh, just like saying one thing and then acting totally different. And it's just really about bringing mm -hmm. that, embodying the principle of transformation. So I like that. Okay, cool. Let's carry on. Number three is individualized consideration. And so what this means is, this is the people level, is that if you care about transformation of the organization, then you know that the people have to undergo a transformation as well. And I think digital transformation is a good example of this. Digital transformation means we focus on the processes. It doesn't mean that we are bringing people's beliefs and understanding like their knowledge and their values into alignment with that transformation. So you need to think about the people in this process as well. And I think we are more than ever positioned in the best way possible to consider the individual, to provide them with coaching, to provide them with uh, peer support, to have online resources, you know, to educate, to uh, counsel, whatever the case may be. But a transformational leader cares about the people. They care about the people going through the same process as well. And then finally, we have intellectual stimulation. And intellectual stimulation means as the leader, I'm giving you permission to challenge the status quo, to innovate, to find new ways for us to achieve this transformation that we have set about to, to, uh, to bring about. And just to kind of bring this into perspective of transactional leadership, very often in transactional leadership, it's not about the innovation. Like it's just about getting the job done. You know, you don't really want people to think outside the box. You just want them to produce X or Y in a certain given time frame. Whereas when we speak about tra transformational leadership, you actually really want to bring out the best in people. You really, it kind of, it kind of links up with the previous one, but I think you want to find ways to bring out the best thinking in your people with regards to the challenge that you are trying to solve. And you are open to so, being challenged yeah. on your own viewpoint. You know, like you're not just, you know, you don't want people to just think the way you think you want to spar with them mentally. Right. That sounds really great. I, I, I think that the thing for leaders to do is to give themselves the space and time to come to work in a space of patience and holding space for their staff. I think mm. a lot of times leaders are frazzled themselves by doom scrolling or just being so caught up in what's going on in the world that they really don't have the energy to come back and to hold the space. Mm. So I think everything that you've said now is a real conscious effort uh, for, for leaders to go through. So to be able to hold that space, engage at that level, and really allow their people to both have an emotional breakthrough as well as a mental um, 
opening so that they can start helping you with the process of transformation. Mm. So yeah, that's great. That's a, it's a nice holistic approach to it. Yeah. And it's always, it starts with, with you, you know, going back to our first episode on transformation, mm. it starts with you being mm. able to start visualizing transformation for yourself and in your own life. And mm. if you can't do that for yourself, there's no way you bring that into your organization. There's no way you support mm. other people in going through the process as well, because transformation is a hell of a process. It's not easy. It takes time. And if you've never gone through one in your own life, then I'm not quite sure how you bring that to fruition in a big organization. Mm. Well, I think also the thing is, is we, we, we find ourselves very uh, suffering from poverty in reimagination. Mm. And uh, there's a poverty around taking your eye off the now and the anxiousness and really looking forward and, and looking at the new renaissance that's coming and really started to put your eye towards that and preparing for that. Look, it's not an easy process. I think it's a very hard process. I think you and I have gone through our own things around our own businesses with this, but it's definitely a must in the space of uncertainty. It's a must to, to, to really step up and to expand the way that you lead, moving from transactional to transformational and then back to transactional when you see it necessary. Mm. I think it's been a great, uh, great episode and, and, and I really enjoy the, the four processes that you had. Uh, do you want to add anything else to close? No, I think you, you nailed it there. You know, the most important thing that I always keep telling people is it's all about nuance. It's all about understanding that there's a fine touch here that sometimes you need to go sit down and ask, what does it look like to be a transformational leader in this moment? And other times you need to sit down and say, well, what does it look like to be a transactional leader in this process? And again, transactional is, doesn't equal bad. Transformational also has its own downsides, just the same way that transactional does. If you are transformational and you are always dreaming about the next transformation, yeah, there's no, there's there's no grounding. chance you don't bring it yeah. through, you know? So yeah, they yeah, both yeah, have yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. role to play. Um, so think about That's that great. and mm. develop that fine touch for how you lead. Very good. That's very good. I love that. Nice categories for us to work with. And if you are enjoying this podcast, uh, please do share it with whoever you think could uh, benefit from hearing it. Uh, and if you've enjoyed it, please go and leave us a rating on iTunes. Uh, we love those ratings. Uh, Eric, we're nearly ready uh, for the whole rebrand and launching the rebrand. And Jeez, I'm uh, so excited. I'm really excited about it. Yes, exciting times for us. And uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And Eric, thank you so much for your wisdom today around that leadership. Uh, any idea when that Thanks booklet is going to be out? Um, probably within the next two or three weeks. Great. Yeah. I think we'll uh, add it to the expansive uh, websites as well. So you can go and download. It'll be a free download, uh, Eric's efforts. And uh, we look forward to chatting to you again next week. Thank you for joining us. And Thanks, thank you brother. so much, Eric. Cheers. Ciao.